I am hand painting hundreds of tile to look like the tile in Monet's kitchen. I have almost enough done to finish this top section right here, which is very, very exciting. And I'm going to go ahead and tile this section where the copper goes before I even worry about having the rest done because I want to enjoy it. It probably will take me the better part of a year to paint all of them and I want a little bit of instant gratification. So that's gonna go right here where the tile is. Hello lovelies, I'm Angela. This is Parisian Farm Girl. Lots of questions about my tile, so let's dive in. This is my graph paper book. I got it in Paris. I use it for everything, for flooring. Here's the Versailles flooring we hope to do on our bedroom later this year. A few weeks ago, you saw me use this paper to map out our gym. I use it for my garden. And in this case today, I've used it for my Monet tile. Now, if you've been following along, you know that I am hand painting tile like the tile in Monet's kitchen. In his kitchen, he has a variety of tile, two specifically that are the fleur-de-lis motif, and I've chosen one of those to really lean into. So this graph paper is how I started making that tile, and I use it just so I can make sure that all my uh, proportions are on point so that everything is symmetrical and uh, is going to line up beautifully. A lot of questions on why I'm not stenciling this tile and why I'm not spray painting this tile. So I'm gonna walk you through and try to cover all those questions today. First, I think we should take a visit to Giverny because if you've never seen the kitchen, it's, it's amazing. If you wanna see it in person, you should join me in Paris this October. I have a few spots left, but let's pause. Let's go to Giverny quickly, just take a look at the kitchen. And let's watch a few clips from a video I did last year on how to paint tile. And we'll pick up right where we left off here. And we're going to finish making this tile together so you can see what's going on in my mind. When Monet found this serene location, he said, I am in raptures. The countryside of Giverny is glorious for me. And as an artist and gardener, I felt the same. The town of Giverny is small and it's full of ateliers and other artists and little restaurants. And it's just quaint and charming. You feel like you've been transported back in time. And I don't know who gets to live in this wonderful space, but my goodness, I was moved to tears to be in this space. Monet's love for color and vibrancy, Japanese art and tile, it speaks to me. And I was not surprised to be as impressed with the interior of the home as I was with his gardens. The day I'm sharing... And this started a really long time ago when we had our first home. I really wanted to create an authentic French kitchen look. I really didn't know what I was doing, but I knew what I didn't want. I didn't want signage. I didn't want uh, a Bon Appetit sign over my stove. I wanted it to look as authentic as it could with the budget that I had. And in observing, a lot of French magazines and French coffee table design books, I noticed that I kept seeing this tile repeated over and over again. Now, I, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know anything about Delft tile or the whole world and history of tile. But as a young bride, I knew that I kept seeing this blue and white tile everywhere and I, I had to have it. I didn't know how I was gonna find it. I didn't know where to source it 
but I knew I had to have it in my kitchen. And then one day I stumbled upon a garage sale and I found this fabric. It was 25 cents and I was ecstatic because as you can see, it's that tile. And in the middle of each tile is a piece of fruit or a chicken or a butterfly. And in the center of that tile, on each corner rather, is this motif that I kept seeing over and over again. Now, years later, I know that that motif is a fleur-de-lis or sometimes it's an oak leaf, but it's this piece of fabric that really launched my first kitchen into what I was thinking at the time was a true French kitchen. I painted the walls a very bright Provencal yellow. I took watercolor paint and really diluted it and painted a garland of olives around the ceiling. And then I set out to hand paint my own tile. I only had two children at the time and I spent all winter painting this tile. That first kitchen is very sentimental for me and it was quite an accomplishment. I painted these four by four tiles just like this and did the little motif in the corner. And then what I did is I had, this towel has seen better days. This is about 20 years old, but this is an old towel from Anthropology. And these were my curtains back in the day. And I did this chinoiserie scene over the range. And I was so proud of it. It was so beautiful. Today in our kitchen, I have Delft wallpaper and I'm just waiting till I have a perfect pocket of time where I can paint all my own tile and then I'm going to tile the entire room a la Monet's kitchen. But I have a few more historic. I couldn't resist sharing some of those flashbacks with you on how I fell in love with tile and some of the different styles I've created over the years. So I've used my graph paper and now I've got my stencil paper and I am creating a stencil. I know a lot of you have asked me, why don't you just stencil this tile? Wouldn't it go faster? Yes, it would, but I'm using glass paint on uh, just basic four by four inch Home Depot tiles. And so the glass paint really isn't conducive. The viscosity, it's not really good for stenciling. So I've made the stencil so that I can lightly pencil trace the pattern onto the tile. And that helps me just keep everything uh, uniform. If I was totally doing it freehand, it might be a bit of a mess. It's hard enough as it is. So I've just created the stencil so that I can trace the pencil. Uh, you'll see in a few minutes some blue on my stencil and that's because originally I was trying to use a paint pen but it's much better now that I've done so many tile. I've figured out that it's much better for me to just lightly pencil the pattern and then I go in with the glass paint pen and mark everything. And then I go in by hand with the actual paint and paint it on top of the paint pen markings. That way I can get that hand painted look and it's a couple layers of paint and everything is right where it needs to be. So it's a win, win, win. You can see every tile takes quite a long time. Now I'm going to put all the links for these products in this video description. So yes, I fill in all of the pencil markings and then go over them with paint. And I let that paint dry for about three days 
And then uh, many of you have asked, do I fire this tile? And yes, with this glass paint, you fire it, quote, fire, unquote, it in your oven. And the directions are right on the bottle and it makes it water resistant. It holds up when you're grouting it. It holds up to cleaning. And it's really, really an incredible thing to be able to paint your own tile and to have an idea and see it come to fruition. So as I said on Friday, this is probably gonna take me the better part of a year. I've got hundreds of tile to paint and as you can see, they take a long time. But you know, when something has been in your mind, when something's been in your heart for so long, it's worth the effort. joining me today. I really hope you tune in on Friday because speaking of tile, the flooring has arrived. In the meantime, get caught up on this last video. Visit ParisianFarmGirl.com. Make sure you've subscribed and I will see you again very soon. A bientôt.